on the podcast. <laughs> uh, this is magic. Thank you for journeying into a different location. Um, it's just nice to not have like sterile, um, a sterile environment to do what feels like inward and outward uh, work on ourselves and within our communities. So aesthetics matter. I mean, this is what this, this means. So good morning, Creative Mornings. Uh, my name is Reverend Catherine Liz Baker. Um, it is a privilege and an honor to be with you here today, sharing in the creative life of bravery and action, honesty and hard work. So this is fun that we get to both start our day and also close the week together, especially focusing on the topic of spirituality, whatever that might mean to you and to us. Um, so if you think that I maybe look familiar, um, or maybe you went to college with me, um, my name is Reverend Kathleen Baker, I use she plus or her pronouns, um, and I am all those things that were aforementioned uh, in the beautifully curated biography. Um, however, in the spirit of transparency and recognition, that while I seem pretty comprehensive uh, on paper, I'm a little bit disruptive and different in person. Um, one of my favorite party tricks is to make people guess what I do for a living. Um, so I will just name, so far as biases and preconceived notions go, Here's what I will name for us. I clearly do not look like your standard clergy person. I also do not fit the mold of an average community leader here in West Michigan. Um, and I will never ever lead you to believe that I have my shit together. Um, I also should have mentioned that I do tend to cuss a lot, so be aware. Uh, so because this isn't a formal keynote or sermon or workshop where you've asked me to exegete or invoke or provide counsel, um, or at least I hope that's not what you called me here to do, um, what I will invite you to know about me um, is that I am a local boomerang, I grew up in Pinery Park as a scholarship kid uh, and moved through spaces, predominantly white spaces, uh, in my early formation as a token minority. Um, I'm the first in my family, even though I am the youngest, uh, to really pursue my academic degrees and um, I uh, yeah, and challenge my religious upbringing and discern into vocational ministry. So this is not what I had imagined for myself, but I just found myself called into those spaces. Um, I tend to have the habit of shaking things up, moving things around, simply by offering the voice and perspective of a queer, truth-telling, moderately young person of color, transracial adoptee, feminist, womanist, and imperfect human on every level. So I also will disclose to you that I didn't have much time to prepare for this because I was in Dallas all week. Um, and so I am so grateful for um, Kelly Brown and for Caitlin and um, mm -hmm. their patience with me in this. So overall, I am a person of faith who has an immense passion for community and collaboration, um, intersectionality, because that's where all things hold together in our interior life. Like in my person, all these things hold true. And I do love cultivating emotional um, agility and spiritual resiliency and teaching people to find your balance in new spaces because that's something that I've always had to do and I recognize that that is a privilege um, and, a, and a barrier. Um, so while I cannot promise you like a riveting lecture or credo or breakout session, I can provide you, I hope I provide you in this time with a few vignettes and moments and some guided conversation um, amongst ourselves around spirituality and faith, um, which I, I always say includes faithfulness and faithlessness um, alike. Um, so that's where I sort of want to get started. Let's address why we're in this space. Um, besides the obvious reason, which, my friends, it is free. Uh, thank you, Christopher <laughs> Rowe, uh, my friend who works here at Fountain Street Church. Um, I shared with Kelly that this space represents a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For some, it is a holy place of worship. 
For others, it is a laugh fest destination. Um, for others, it marks a special occasion, like a wedding, a graduation, um, a protest vigil, funerals, or even an LGBTQ open prom. Uh, I also shared with Kelly that this space mimics uh, so many similar spaces in our modern day and age and that this space is a home to people who don't entirely know who they are. So this space sort of represents that wandering and um, of people who are trying to make and create and deconstruct and resource and programatize and brand themselves over and over again. Uh, to sustain or maintain a sense of relevancy. And I also shared with Kelly that for whatever this space might mean to us, or maybe it feels a little uncomfortable, um, I don't know when the last time was that many of us like came either unintentionally or intentionally into a sanctuary for whatever non-specific event um, and had a pastor speak to you. But maybe this space can serve as maybe a new way forward um, a point of reflection maybe in which so many of us with our religious opinions or upbringings and spiritual traumas can de-escalate those biases and preconceived notions that I mentioned um, as well as our grief, our disappointment and bring a source of curiosity and welcome and connection into this space and into our lives. So let's talk a little bit of spirituality. What feels very ironic is that I do not consider myself a deeply spiritual person. Um, I, I'm not sure if many of you have heard the term SBNR, which refers to um, a, like a general term of spiritual but not religious. It's usually thrown into spaces of millennials or a generational movement that uh, maybe does not identify um, as part of institutional hubbub or fluff or structure, um, but your own, like forging your own notion of identity and your own sense of worldview. So for me, I actually, maybe I identify as the opposite, that I identify more, more so as religious than I do so spiritual, because I do identify as a person of faith. And here's what I mean by that. Um, my faith requires me to pursue answers to the questions like, how do we summon ourselves to something bigger and better and deeper and wider than we ourselves? How do we cultivate love and sustain truest belonging in this world and within our reach? And how do we, in all of that, do so through a lens of equity and justice and peace? Um, so for me, while well, my faith was cultivated in the Christian tradition, namely the Reformed Church, so I'm ordained in the Reformed Church in America, um, and I also have like an Americanized or Westernized um, worldview, but it is all steeped in the re earnest reality that I know as an adoptee that I could have been placed or formed or shaped um, and invited into any other perspective. And I really do believe that I would have still found the same sense of gravity. Um, so just because I practice in the Christian tradition, I'm very ecumenical, I'm very interfaith, I'm very non-faith too, in the sense that I don't believe that my view as a Christian, that my faith privatizes things like peace and justice and goodness and love in this world um, because I think that would be impossible and pretty foolish to do so. Um, instead, my faith illumines and sparks within me a sense of collaboration and invitation and welcome that I have the honor to partner with those alongside me working for the same thing for whatever intention or background that they have. Um, so that we together can move forward into a better, a better, more beautiful world. Um, so, so in this time, and this is where the preparation stops. Um, in this time, I wanted us to explore sort of two different categories um, and two different exercises. The first being, I, um, I'm going to share like my sense of call and like how I arrived to this, and then the second is the sense of introductions because. 
um, I shared with, where's Annie? I shared with Annie earlier that um, West Michigan sort of drives me a little crazy because we're so title driven and we're so performative and we're so resume forward. And you heard my resume, you heard all those things, um, but my personhood is just a little different, a little deeper and a little bit more disruptive. And so I want us to practice that too. Um, and because I think like spirituality for me means pulling myself out of isolation, um, which is usually the opposite of what I think the stereotype would be and into the world around me um, because I am an introvert. So those are the two things that I wanted to get to. So let me start first with um, my sense of call. So how did I become all of the things that um, was, were so kindly and graciously listed? Um, within my Protestant denomination of the Christian faith, we practice a three-tiered denominational call process. And here's what that means. It's internal, it is educational, and it is communal. So first, it begins with you personally that you have or you identify a desire that you feel summoned to something bigger than yourself. This could be God, right, in that scenario. Um, Trying the spirit. Um, then the second is that you formalize that process um, or you formalize that call with a process and that involves a local judicatory or governing body um, that seeks to equip you, so you can't just be like, oh, I'm doing this thing, I'm really good at it. You actually have to be equipped to do the thing, um, which is the education, and that's where the training comes in about history and theology and literature and biblical languages and homiletics and counseling, and for me, that was like the beauty of like why I feel so pulled and so grounded by religion, because I couldn't get to those places by my own self, and knowing that like spiritual renegades existed long before um, our modern day and age. And so the fact that they have paved and pathed our way forward would be um, so sad for me to dismiss that. Um, and then finally, it's marked by the third thing, which is you receive a call or like a call in which basically you have a job that um, affirms and validates and like says, yes, you have been trained, um, you have been educated, and also you feel that that is true, well, we also want to validate that that is true within you. So I love that three-part like communion of um, vocation because it really holds you responsible to others and others responsible to you. And then you build systems that put those things in place or in sync with one another. Um, so, I'm trying to think, so if we could, in this time, just as Kate um, offered us to center with, our, with ourselves, I want us to center with one another. So if you could break into groups of maybe three or four, if you feel comfortable, um, I want to talk through about your sense of call. Um, so if you think about how you landed, where you landed, what are the components of that in internal or like interior sense of call, that equipping, maybe you're still in that phase of like, oh, I really want to get to another place and I need, you know, X, Y, or Z, like how do I, how do I make that happen? But to talk through the interior, the educational, and then finally like, what is your final destination? Like, what do you want people to affirm when they know you and into your spiritual identity, how you are received in this world? Um, so I invite us to sort of break into space and time in which we can have conversation and they'll pull us back together. Okay. <laughs>